The foundation for Jarrah's claim that NASA's moon rocks actually originated from the Earth comes, of course, from the Bible according to Casing. The fact that moon rocks are very similar to Earth rocks was also taken into consideration by Bill Casey. As he states on page 10 of the Desert Publications issue of his book, of all the tasks undertaken to assure near success of the hoax, creation of believable rocks was the easiest. By their own admission, all rocks contained minerals common to Earth. In short, no real surprises at all. The great sensei Casing managed to trivialize the most compelling evidence that the Apollo missions were real by saying that faking believable moon rocks was the easiest thing to do. But he apparently gave no clue as to how it could be done. At least Jarrah doesn't reveal the details as to how Grandpa Casing would have gone about faking moon rocks. This is a bare assertion fallacy, implying something is true simply because the person saying it says it's true. Amazingly, although these striking similarities were staring the geologists in the face, they never put two and two together. Of course, as far as the lunar geologists were concerned, the Earth and Moon must have shared the same origin. Perhaps these strident similarities between Earth rocks and Moon rocks were overshadowed by the even more obvious differences in their chemical composition and mineralogy. For instance, some of the most common minerals found on Earth are completely or nearly absent in moon rocks. Quartz, calcite, magnetite, micas, amphiboles, and sulfide minerals. So, perhaps the hundreds of scientists and geologists who have examined the moon rocks for the past 40 years aren't the idiots that Jarrah makes them out to be after all. Somehow, Jarrah thinks that by saying these geologists overlook certain similarities, he can poison the well and discredit 40 years of scientific research. Obviously, Jarrah doesn't understand that scientists classify things based on differences, more so than similarities. Jarrah then plays an excerpt from the 1999 BBC documentary, The Planets, Episode 4 that shows one popular theory on how the moon was formed by a Mars-sized planet impacting with the Earth. I won't bore you by playing the whole segment, but Jera follows it with an interview from the same documentary where geologist Dr. William Hartman discusses oxygen isotopes. When we got the rocks back from the moon, we saw that the um, isotopes of oxygen in the lunar rocks were exactly the same as on the Earth. Now the reason this is important is that we have meteorites from other parts of the solar system and each other part of the solar system has a different composition of these oxygen isotopes, ratio of one type of isotope to the other. The moon has exactly the same as the Earth. So that seemed to rule out the idea that the moon had formed far away and it made it much more plausible that the moon was something made out of the same material that the Earth was made out of. The operative word, or phrase in this case, is oxygen isotope ratio. What exactly is Dr. Hartman saying? Well, in eighth grade we learned that the number of protons in an atom determines what element it is. Each and every element then has one or more isotopes determined by the number of neutrons. Oxygen, for example, has three common isotopes found in all rocks. Plain Joe oxygen 16 and his two chubbier brothers oxygen 17 and oxygen 18. By plotting the ratios of the two heavier oxygen isotopes to oxygen-16, we find that rocks that originate from different regions of our galaxy have different ratios of these oxygen isotopes. Earth rocks and moon rocks fall along the same line on this plot. Does that prove that earth rocks and moon rocks are identical? No. But it does give scientists a dictionary split that they can use to distinguish earth rocks and moon rocks from rocks originating from other parts of our solar system. To supposedly strengthen his claim that moon rocks are actually earth rocks, Jera quotes from a National Geographic children's book. On page 117 of the National Geographic Picture Atlas of Our Universe, written by Roy A. Gallant in 1980, we find this statement. Maybe the moon and the earth were formed at the same time, out of the same gas and dust. The same elements are found on both. 
calcium, aluminium, titanium, magnesium, silicon, oxygen, iron, but in far different proportions. The most significant element of all is oxygen. The same elements are found on the Earth and Moon in far different proportions. These differing proportions make moon rocks unique compared to Earth rocks. Did Jera even realize what he just said? This one statement alone disqualifies everything else he says about moon rocks being the same as Earth rocks. And why would Jera think that oxygen is the most significant element in this list? Could it be that oxygen isotope ratios are the only isotope ratios that are identical between earth rocks and moon rocks? Apparently so, because this simple fact becomes the sole crux of the remainder of his moon rock assertions. Evidently, when pressed with incriminating evidence, NASA must rewrite their scientific data and historical record, and thus, everyone must shed themselves of the old data. I'm not exactly sure what incriminating evidence he thinks he uncovered here, but consider this. Humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans are all made from the exact same elements. The exact same minerals, for that matter, in nearly the exact same proportions. We share the exact same oxygen isotope ratios. Our bodies all contain water in nearly the exact same proportions. We are told that we evolved from the same prehistoric ancestors, and a large percentage of our DNA even looks remarkably similar. So how is it that biologists, geneticists, and chemists have overlooked all these strident similarities for all these years? How can they ignore such conclusive evidence that chemically, organically, and genetically we are the same animal? Jera applies this exact logic almost as effectively when he compares moon rocks to earth rocks. It's an obvious fallacy of equivalence. So, at the end of the day, what exactly has Jera been able to prove? Well, earth rocks and moon rocks have the same oxygen isotope ratios. That's true. They are composed of many of the same elements, but in far different proportions. He also ignores the absence of minerals and moon rocks that are commonly found in earth rocks. Basically, Jera, as Grandpa casing before him, offers no convincing proof that any of NASA's moon rocks could have come from the earth. His limited grasp of real science leaves him waving his arms in the air and reading from children's books to failingly support his claim. In short, no real surprises at all. Ciao, moon hoax conspirators wherever you are.